Budget information meeting. My name is Jim Clark. I chair the Maple Run Board. The Maple Run Board of Directors, just a quick list of us. Um, again, Jim Clark, that's me. Nilda Ganella French from the city. Steve LaRosa from the town. Mike Lesperance, who is leaving our board, is, also, is from Fairfield. Denise Smith from the city is also leaving our board. Nina Hunsaker is from the town. Mike Malone is from Fairfield. Uh, Martha Casavant Reese is from the town. However, she did send me and uh, notify me that she plans on leaving this board, so we will have to uh, appoint a replacement for her. Al Corey's from the city, and Jack McCarthy from the town. So, for our agenda tonight, first we're going to talk about uh, who we are. We're going to visit each of our schools. I'm going to ask the principals to speak to their school. We're going to talk about the pre K through 12 budget. Talk about the tax rate information. We're going to take a look at the, the ballot and then we'll discuss voting locations. So, who are we? We're five different schools. Our high school is BFA. We have three pre K through 8 schools Fairfield Center School, St. Albans City School, also known as City School, St. Albans Town Education <coughs> Center, also known as Town School, and we have Northwest Technical Center, which includes our adult education program. There's a picture of our, of our buildings. And I'm going to ask the principals to talk about each of their schools, so I'll turn it over to Principal Mosca for BFA. Thank you, Mr. Farr. Um, we just have a highlight slide that talks about uh, teaching and learning, uh, what our students uh, have accomplished. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, our students exceeded uh, state averages in the um, SBAC assessment by three points in English language arts and six points in math. Uh, took a lot of work and directed effort on the part of our staff and uh, we're very pleased that we're seeing the results. The SBAC, as you know, is a challenging exam and it's good to see that our kids are exceeding state averages and, and, uh, and enhancing their learning. Um, the AP test is also another um, way for us to demonstrate what our students know and can do uh, to get a pass on the AP exam, which is the most challenging mm -hmm. curriculum, uh, essentially in, in any high school. Uh, you need a three. Um, our students are achieving fours and fives, but the pass rate, meaning three or above, uh, increased by 4%. They take a wide variety of advanced placement classes. Um, colleges measure students by the challenge of the curriculum. Um, I'm pleased that we include AP uh, and our opportunities for kids increases regularly so that uh, we try to have as many students as possible access that exam. The uh, measure of our students upon leaving, we want to make sure that it says 98.5% of our graduates have a post-secondary plan. We work very closely with guidance and Dr. Randall. I'd love to see that as 100% that everybody has a plan over 60% of our kids do go to four-year colleges. Students also access um, two-year schools. Uh, we're very proud of the number of students who choose a military option. Um, and over 20% of our students are uh, furthering their uh, experience in the workforce. So uh, we've got some good numbers to report upon completion. And um, this is an interesting piece of data that I wanted to include. Uh, Act 29 is where um, students can choose to attend high schools throughout the state. Um, I'm pleased to report that 19 students chose to attend BFA over the last year. Uh, we welcome students from other schools. Uh, they bring a variety and diversity to our experience um, as a school community. And uh, it, it's interesting and important to note that students have chosen to come uh, to BFA. Uh, we lose far fewer than the numbers that we bring in. And I think that speaks well of our staff, our programs, and uh, our academics. Co-curricular and um, extracurricular are also very important in the overall experience. I mentioned teaching and learning. The other piece of that is um, the experiences that student have, students have and the relationships that they build. Frequently that enhances student learning, but it also is part of the overall comprehensive high school experience. These are the things that you probably remember as a, as a young person in high school and our kids carry with 
with them, their life, the lifelong lessons from these opportunities. Um, it was a lot of fun and a great spirit builder when um, we won those uh, hockey and uh, snowboarding titles and we can celebrate that. Obviously we celebrate just the uh, numbers of students who participate and what that means to our school community. The Powder Puff football game raises $27,000 for uh, people in need and uh, for cancer, um, for folks who suffer from, from that horror. And uh, it's nice to see a connection with the students from NVU putting on that annual game uh, and raising that kind of money is real cheap to our kids and the community outreach that we have. Um, also wonderful to note the uh, Unified Championship for Special Olympics and hanging that banner. And uh, as you probably know, we really worked to upgrade our fall musical. We've hired a new drama instructor. Godspell was a very big success. Hosting the President's Marine Band was certainly a big event um, in our new gym, for the, I'm sorry, at the Collins Pearly Center, uh, which is also an important part of our campus. That was also another opportunity for people to come and appreciate the arts uh, through our campus at BFA. So uh, teaching, learning, relationships, and experiences uh, will make our school uh, an attractive place for many, many students, and I think a source of pride for our community. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Um, Colin Sperley, Dave Kimmel was going to come in and speak uh, to this slide, but he couldn't be here. Um, so there's just a couple of things I'd like to point out about it. One is public mission of Collins Pearly is to provide maximum wellness opportunity for the largest number of people. They have 17 certified instructors with over 200 wellness classes. Um, the other thing I would point out is the Best Things Vermont website identified the 10 best indoor and outdoor sports facilities. In the state of Vermont, Collins Pearly ranked number one. And as Chris said, this is part of BFA's campus. Fairfield, turn it over to Dr. O'Dell. Good evening. Fairfield is a, a small and tight-knit community, and I'm very fortunate to uh, be serving as the principal this year. Uh, we also are a community that is uh, very well supported by our um, community members. Our school is very well supported, as evidenced by the six of you who are from Fairfield who are here tonight, so thanks for being here. Um, we are definitely connected to the land around us through our outdoor classroom programs. We have a sugar house. Uh, that will be producing some of the best maple syrup you'll ever taste coming up very shortly. We have a uh, high tunnel garden that produces produce uh, throughout much of the year. Um, and we are active in getting out into um, the woods with our nature trail, Chester Arthur Nature Trail, and uh, just all kinds of opportunities that, that we have to connect to the land. Hopefully, um, we will convince our children that Fairfield is a wonderful place that they want to be for the future so that they will stay there or come back after college. That's the idea of connecting them to the land. This year, we've been very fortunate to add Fresh back into our programming for sharing an employee with uh, BFA. And uh, we have some lovely pictures up there of the children. Uh, we have our kindness students of the month up there. We just had our students of the month for love and acceptance this month. And then we're going to be still ending out the year with our uh, HR3, honesty, respect, responsibility, and readiness to learn. Those will be our uh, themes for the next four months. So a lot of good things are going on at Fairfield Center School, and I'm very proud to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Next up is City School. John. Um, so St. Alvin City School, we are, um, so this year we're continuing with the concept of the safe, achieving, caring. We've brought in the conscious discipline. Um, we've actually been bringing in restorative practice and we're really looking at how we make sure that every single child feels like they're part of something really special. Um, that really goes to our whole child approach to how we're um, approaching education. We are Along with our core subjects, we're doing our thematic units that we've been doing all along. Our stewardship, which we started, and I realized this today as I was answering somebody else's question, that we started that seven years ago, and it's still going strong. And this year, our economics team was based almost entirely, or at least linked to every team's stewardship project. And it all ended up with kids creating these amazing projects that um, show how we're taking care of our community and our land. And the last thing is that this year we were actually highlighted. Our maker space has been another thing. Technology has been something that we've used to help our students, again, feel really proud of themselves and what they're capable of doing. We developed a maker space. And through the economics unit, 
and also being highlighted in the Vermont Digital Learning Plan. The makerspace is now something that most of our staff and students <coughs> that know how to use and love using. So City School is continuing to challenge itself to grow and learn. Thank you, John. And then Town School, Angela. Hi, thank you. So um, we have three uh, main areas of focus that um, we're really putting a lot of effort into at SATEC. Um, one is our school climate, um, maintaining a really positive and welcoming um, school for all the students and staff is very important to us. Um, and we also have um, efforts in coordinating our literacy instruction um, and our math instruction. We have um, you know, much going on with the teachers and um, we've introduced the, uh, the Calkins reading and writing workshop programs in the school. Um, we're involved in the math studio program, um, which is a very intensive um, coaching model that really looks at um, having students be um, more engaged in mathematics um, and, and doing more uh, work with their math. Um, related to our um, work around PBIS, we were a school of merit. We were um, given that award this past fall. Um, we're implementing uh, tier two at, at this time and um, really have some good success with that. Um, and uh, as always, in some of the photos here show um, many of, you know, a few examples of some of the activities that the students are involved in. But um, I think um, our students really think about connecting with their community. And I have a few examples up there of things that they've done to support the overall community. Um, you know, doing collections and, and various activities to, to help those in need. So thank you very much. Thank you. And the tech center. Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, Leanne Wright, director of the Northwest Technical Center. We are one of 16 career technical education centers in the state of Vermont. And lucky enough to be attached right beside BFA where students uh, get to walk right over and uh, take advantage of um, one of our 10 programs. This year we're introducing a new program um, for 2018-19, um, the Outdoor Technology Program, which is designed for 9th and 10th grade students. And it's based on experiential learning to explore the various um, career pathways uh, that are available to them. And um, we have adopted the whole school, whole community, whole child model for that particular program. We're also celebrating a fourth annual Tech and Engineering Day, and that's going to be happening in April. And it's a day-long competition uh, that serves sixth, seventh, and eighth graders from all of our sending schools. And uh, they get to participate in a variety of uh, STEM activities. So everybody's anticipating that. And uh, community, community service initiatives um, include Project Happiness, which uh, typically happens around December. And then we have a, a county-wide community service day where um, every single one of our programs participates in May and gives back to the community uh, doing community service. And lastly, we have our career development office at the Northwest Tech Center. It offers trainings um, in industry certifications for adults, um, which advance, advances their careers um, or to start a new career. And uh, we have a variety of classes listed there, clinical medical assistant, welding, um, para-professional educator training, um, we also have the comp TIA and uh, various other classes. And um, the good thing is that the courses are approved for BSEC, uh, non degree funding based on student eligibility. And you'll notice a few pictures there of our students. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now I've asked uh, the superintendent, Dr. Dirt, to speak to our five year plan. Kevin? Good evening. So when we became a uh, merged district, we decided. One thing uh, to work with the board on was a five-year plan on areas where we could work on academics, work on efficiencies within the system. And um, these are some bulleted areas that I'll just go over showing some of the things that we've already completed and things that we're still working on moving forward because we're, we're in the second year, right? Second year of the five-year plan right now. So we, uh, one of the first things we did uh, the board created a, a mission and vision, and you, you can see that right above the, the screen. I thought it was a really well done uh, mission, and we really try to follow that very carefully. We also developed core values uh, to go along with the mission. We created a district-wide common school calendar. I know that may sound small, but it was... Uh, up, up to this point, every school was doing things differently, different uh, days off. 
it created havoc at times because people were all in different places. So we, we finally have a common school calendar. Uh, we developed and implemented a plan for district-wide choice. So we actually have a, a limited choice program within Maple Run. So if there's a, uh, a parent who might be at one elementary school and would really like to have that, their child go to another elementary school with <coughs> Maple Run, there's a process for that. Uh, it, it's, it's limited, but it's worked very, very well. And from what I'm understanding so far, we've only had one year into it. Uh, it's been very successful for those students. It's not, sometimes one school's just not the appropriate school. And uh, they'll have some opportunity to, to try another one. We've unified pre-kindergarten and kindergarten registration. That certainly helped as a district, so we, we are able to track everybody uh, in pre-K as we continue moving forwards in pre-K as part of Act 166 and uh, getting more and more students into the program earlier. We've developed a communications plan. Uh, Lisa DeRocha was very instrumental in helping us out with that just to try to get information better out through, through our website, through um, uh, our Alert Now, which is our, our major system we use, through newspapers. You, if you read the newspaper, you'll probably see where every school now is getting something in the paper continually, monthly, which allows people to know more what's going on. We completed a transportation study, and um, we were able to consolidate our buses, where we're using now less buses, and yet while we, cons we consolidated, we're actually able to pick up more students. Those of you who might live in the uh, St. Owens Town area, we, down in the Quam Shore area, the students never got picked up to be a thing. And we were able to rework the system to allow that to happen. We have students now, our buses now going out to our sending schools more, um, Georgia and Sheldon and, and Hallberg. So we're being <coughs> able to pick up more of our students there. It's, it's so far working very well, uh, which hits that, that next bullet. We've created a district-wide staff handbook for all our schools. We amazingly just finished this year at Unified Negotiations for all our professional staff and our support staff. So up to this point, we had very inefficient use of this because every school had their own contract. Uh, everything was different. It was very tough to keep things in place. Um, we now have one contract for our support staff, one for our uh, professional staff throughout the district. It's made things much easier. With voter approval, we purchased this office that you're in. And uh, this has been a good savings along the way because we were able, we've been renting this uh, for I don't know how many years, Martha, but more than time. Exactly. <laughs> And with that, we've been able to take some of our other programs, like our pre-K program, which was in another area that we were renting, to bring it down. So we're saving all our rental money. And we had a good deal where, when we bought the uh, property, we're paying, all the money we're paying into it right now is equity. It's, it's a no interest loan, and it's been uh, a, a real good uh, money savings. We, here's some things that we're, we're looking at. We're researching the cost of implementing new district-wide phone system. Those of you who are in the district know more than anybody, we're using an antiquated phone system right now. And uh, we're looking at this, we're, we're not quite there yet, but when it's done, all of the schools will have a, a new phone system where we actually can call from one school to another. Um, as part of one system, it'll be a, a big boom. We were working on a decision-making process with hiring, because until before we were Maple Run, we hired in each of our buildings. And now that we are Maple Run in a much larger school district, we have to figure out a good, efficient, and effective way of hiring 
because whether it's you're in Fairfield or in town or in city or at BFA, we're all one employee. So we're now a district of over 600 staff members and about 2,700 students. So it's a larger thing that we have to look at to do it effectively. And we're not there yet, but we're, we're, we're close. We've created a professional development plan uh, for our staff and administrators. We're working on uh, discussing and defining supervision and evaluation process for, for our full district. Uh, right now, we're looking at our year one and two teachers and how best to do that consistently, and then we're moving on to the rest of our teachers. Um, we've always had an issue with the fact that we have five different facilities and we've never been able to in any way centralize that. So now we're looking at, now that it's one district, how can we uh, better centralize the operations with our facilities so that we're looking at it from a bigger system than each individual schools, which can allow us to do more in all of our schools um, with staff that we already have in place. And we're, that's really in year three, but we're, that's what we're looking at down the road. <coughs> we're investigating current status of educational programming. We're looking at equity, uh, academics, our after school activities, all of this, we're looking at it from a systemic point of view of, of of K-12 in all of our buildings, and making sure that no matter where you are in the schools, you have um, equity and are able to uh, get the same offerings. Which brings me that brings to that next bullet too. Down the road, in I think year four, we're also looking at the fact as one district, how can we how can we save money on our purchasing? Uh, up to this point, we've purchased in each of our buildings, and there's money savings if we can all find a way to do it together. Technology is a good example. Computers are so expensive. If you're not buying computers at Town School and, and Fairfield School and all separately, and if you're coming in with one big purchase, uh, you have the, the potential to save some pretty big bucks with uh, centralized purchasing. Is that it? Yes. It is. Thank you. Guys. I would just say that we're, we're just at the cusp of this, but um, I'm pretty excited about the potential that we can do within the next few years. And that brings us to the Maple Run budget for FY19. Surprisingly, I couldn't get anybody that wanted to talk to these slides, so I will take them out of <laughs> So our expense budget for FY19, we're at, uh, coming in at $54,529,488, which equates to a per pupil spending of $15,481. This represents a per pupil spending increase over this year of 3.16%. This is how it breaks out. Roughly 72% of the budget goes into regular education, 23% into special ed, and then 5% for the Northwest Technical Center. This is where the money goes. We have 4% goes into purchased uh, professional services, 2% into property services, 8% is tuition and transportation, 6% goes for supplies, 2% uh, debt service, dues, fees, and then almost 80% of our budget goes into salary and benefits. <coughs> Here's how the budget breaks down. <coughs> PK through 12 instruction, about 21 million. High school and vocational, about a million and a half. Student support services, around five million. Admin services, about four and a half million. Operations, maintenance, security, about four and a half million. Student transportation services, 1.4 million. Uh, Long-term debt, those are the bonds, just under a million. Adult education at 150,000. Special Ed, 12 and a half million, and then the tax center is just under three million for the total of 54 million 529. So 
how do we get to the property adjusted tax rate? Well, we take our initial budget, 54,529. We subtract out all our revenues, which is um, interest income, grants, tuitions, those kinds of things. And that leaves us with just over 39 million, uh, which is what we call the education spending. Our pupil count for FY19 is gonna be 2,525.57 students. And then to get the spending per equalized pupil, this number divide this number, it gives you the 15,481. Martha, tell me if I go wrong. At this point, um, we divide the yield, this by the yield. The yield is a number that's um, established by Montpelier, and that basically takes all the educational spending across the state, um, and that's what determines what this number is. This right now is just an estimate. Um, it was determined when they thought education spending was going to come in around 3.5%. Um, across the state, it's coming in much lower than that, so we expect this number to go up which will mean our tax rate will go down. But as of right now, they haven't given us a new number, so we have to stick with this number. So that gives us um, our homestead tax rate of 1.573. Our Act 46 tax rebate, we're in the second year of our incentive, so we get eight cents taken off of that. And that leaves us with the estimated adjusted tax rate of $1.493. Okay, then we take that number and we apply the common level of appraisal, which is known as the CLA. And what the CLA is, is a multiplier that the state assigns each community. And it's based on, it's a multiplier that if properties in your community have been selling higher than the appraised value, it will, it will cause your taxes to go up. If your properties have been selling below the appraised value, it will cause your taxes to go down. Sometimes the CLA is your friend, sometimes not so much. Um, this year, the CLA is a friend to the town. Uh, for those of us that live in the city in Fairfield, uh, it most certainly is not our friend. And you can see what it does to the tax rate. So in St. Albans City, it added about 13 cents to our tax rate. St. Albans Town, it dropped it about a nickel. Fairfield is a mirror Im image of the city it also added about 13 cents to the tax rate. Um, this is, if property goes up, your taxes go up. And there's nothing we can really do about that. So how does it compare to last year? Well, not so good. Um, this is this year, this is last year, this is the difference. So you can see an increase in St. Albans City and in Fairfield of about 17 cents. St. Albans Town uh, fares a little better, they're only at 11 cents. So these are the players that, that drive the increase in our taxes. And, and what Martha has done is split each of them out. And you can see, essentially, this is the, the yield. This is that number I talked about um, that Montpelier sets. The number that they've given us right now will raise our tax rates about a nickel. Um, again, we expect that number to go up, which means our tax rate would go down. So uh, we don't expect it to be any worse than this. We actually expect it to be a couple cents better than this. Uh, but at this point, we don't. Equalized pupil count. Um, we lost some pupils, so that's about a fifth of a cent. Um, we went from 10 cents to 8 cents on our merger incentive, so there's 2 cents. This is the result of the Maplefield budget, the 3% increase. We subtotal all this up. Then we add our friend or not friend in LA, and that's how we get the tax rates that I showed you before. A couple things to keep in mind here. Um, this doesn't include income sensitivity. Go to the next slide. This is the exact same slide, only it's dollars. So what we did is, because this doesn't always make a lot of sense to people as to how that affects me, we took a situation and we said, okay, if someone has a $200,000 home, what would that mean in dollars? Um, so this is a direct translation from the numbers from the other table. The effect of the yield in the city is going to, well, in all the communities, it's going to cost almost $100 to everybody in their taxes. Um, again, we feel like that number is going to change. 
and should get better. The pupil count is going to add four dollars to your tax. Uh, the decrease in the incentive, about forty dollars. The Maple Run budget is going to add about ninety dollars to the budget, and that's the three percent increase. Then you add in the CLA, and you can see what it does to the numbers. Uh, so, so the things to keep in mind again, we expect this number to go to get better once um, Montpelier gets all the numbers in. This does not include income sensitivity. So for a household income of less than $147,000, these numbers will be adjusted. The only thing that the Maple Run Board can control is this line right here. All these other numbers are out of our control. And the last thing to consider is had we not merged, we would be adding $160 to each of these numbers because that's how much our incentive is. So City and Fairfield will be looking at a number of around $500 and St. Albans Town would almost be $400 if we didn't have the Act 46 incentive. Um, the other thing, as I said, this is the only one we, we control. It would to drop this just one cent on the tax rate would require about a three hundred thousand dollar cut. So dropping this doesn't affect your total tax as much at all. So this is a breakdown of just our tax increases. Maple Run budget. This is in St. Albans City, by the way. Uh, uh, Fairfield looks very much like this. Maple Run budget. Your common level assessment, this is the yield, incentive decrease, and per pupil drop. The thing to keep in mind, this is the only thing you're voting on, this area right here. This is because property values have gone up. This is because education in the state has gone up all around the state. This is due to our budget. So even if this were to get voted down, this doesn't go away. Taxes are going to go up. This plays just about one-fourth of the increase in our taxes. If that were to get voted down and we would have to come back with, with another budget, it would probably, you know, it would look like this. We, we, we'd make some cuts and cut some opportunities for kids, but this would all stay. Your taxes would still go up. <coughs> Almost as much, you'd probably cut maybe two bucks a month out of your tax bill. Um, and we'd have to cut opportunities for kids. So that's what we're voting on. The board feels like that's a pretty modest increase. It's 3%. 90% um, of that increase is due strictly to salary and benefits increase as we move forward in the next year. Um, the other 10% of that increase is due to services going up. Um, we've actually made a, a number of savings along the way to keep that, to keep that where it is. Jim, what do you mean by that services going up? And what, what savings have you made? Yeah, I don't know. Sue, I'm going to hold on to the question. So okay. let me just, I'm almost finished anyway. Um, Town looks a little better because they don't have the CLA, right? They just have the budget and they have the yield. Um, same thing though, that's all they're voting on. The numbers are the same, $90. Fairfield looks exactly like City. We're in the same, we're in exactly the same show. Um, I think the board's done a pretty good job of keeping this budget to a modest increase. Um, I think moving forward, um, if the new board decides to keep me as a chair, that I will probably uh, try to make it as a priority to look for efficiencies, ask the administration to think out of the box as to how we might do better. We've been at this a year now. We're over the transition year. We've got our feet on the ground. Um, it's time to, there's a lot of momentum 
in the school system, and it's time to maybe start looking at it and see how we can we can improve it and we can cut the costs better. So, we looked at the numbers for a two hundred thousand dollar house. These are the numbers uh, for other values. Um, again, I would say that without the Act Forty Six incentive, we'd add, we'd add one hundred and sixty dollars to that one. We'd add two hundred and forty dollars to that. St. Albans Town fares a little better because of the CLA. Fairfax, just like St. Albans City. Fairfield. Fairfield, excuse me. <laughs> Had to happen sooner or later. <laughs> okay, so this is what the ballot's going to look like. We're going to elect, ask you to elect a clerk and a treasurer. Amanda Forbes is running for both. I don't think she's, I think she's running for both. Article 3, we're going to elect one school board director from Fairfield. Uh, that's the only race that I know of that we have. We're going to elect a school board director from St. Albans Town, two school board directors from St. Albans City. Article 4, shall the legal voters of the Maple Run School District authorize the board to borrow money not in excess of anticipated revenue for the school year. So what this allows us to do borrow the money that's in our budget once it's approved. Um, we actually make money on this because, believe it or not, we get more interest most of the time uh, in the savings account than we pay for the loan. So it's a positive revenue. But more importantly, it allows us to keep our bills paid, reduce late fees. Shall the voters authorize the board to transfer the audited general fund balance of the current fiscal year to a capital reserve fund? Um, most of us know what this is. It's a rainy day fund. Um, any money that's left over in the current year gets transferred into that capital reserve fund, um, put aside for a rainy day, so when we find one of the roofs are leaking at the school, we'll have money to fix it. We don't have to go out for a bond. Um, this and this, neither one of these will add anything to the tax bill, by the way. School budget. So this is where we, you vote yes or no, to expend the $54,529,488. Um, education spending of $15,481 per equalized pupil, which is 3.16% higher than the current year. So you can vote early. You can re request absentee ballots in person, writing, telephone, email, or online at mvp.sec.state.vermont.us. Um, you can request ballots up to the day before town meeting day. Or you can vote early. You can vote at the town clerk's office before the deadline. You can take your ballot out of the office and return it later. Or you can mail it in. You can have the ballot mailed to you, and you can either mail it back or deliver it in person. Or if you're sick or disabled, you can ask the clerk to have two justices of the peace bring the ballot to you at home. You vote by Australian ballot. The usual polling places, Fairfield will be at Fairfield Center School, St. Albans will be at City Hall, St. Albans Town will be at Collins Prairie. Questions? Yeah. So, earlier you were talking about um, the services. What services were you talking about? You said the services. We're going up. So those would be things such as um, NCSS contracts, um, out-of-district placements for students, snow removal, solid waste. Um, those are the ones that come off the top of my head. So those types of services are going increasing. Mm -hmm. And where, where are we seeing the savings? Well, some of the savings we talked about relative to like the uh, sale of the building, the additional rental, we saved on efficiencies. Um, because we've become somewhat more efficient and we're looking to even become more so relative to the merger, we've saved a position at the business office where um, we've been able to do with one less position because there's so many things that we've been able to uh, just eliminate the redundancy. Exactly. Yeah. Redundancy is a good word. Um, 
We've saved on tuition monies uh, that we didn't paid out in years past that we are no longer paying. Uh, so these are many of the issues right now that have um, we've saved. We're looking, obviously, as I said earlier, with the, with the uh, five-year plan at many of these other issues, but they're mainly in two, year three, year four, like that as we continue moving and trying to centralize a bit more.
uh, on the insurance HRA and HSAs and how we're paying for that and we still have to pay a penalty for three years. That's one example. Um, maybe then there's some others that maybe you can mention that we kind of, I feel like we fight an uphill battle with the state uh, on a regular basis. Um, well, certainly the governor is working hard to cut educational expenses. Um, what you referred to during our negotiation process was um, <coughs> how the state decided how much health care dollars um, a district could put towards their employees. Um, we had already negotiated a contract by that time, and um, we got punished because the governor thought we gave our employees too much. And we have to pay over two years, one hundred sixty thousand dollars. One hundred sixty thousand dollars, which is what the the uh, state says we should have saved. So we're going to have to pay them anyway. So, but we were in a unique spot. We had to pull four contracts into one, and um, that was one of the bargaining chips. <coughs> I guess I, I'm just curious about sure. um, the tuition funds for Fairfield School. I would assume, like, as we keep going, less and less tuition is going out of this district. Mm -hmm. And um, how we're seeing the benefits to that in the budget. How the district is seeing the benefits yeah. to it? Yeah, like overall. I mean, I'm from Fairfield, but I'm, I'm like really just talking overall. This is like, one big community, it's mm -hmm. going to help everybody, so I'm just wondering how that's going to help because there were kids who were being tuitioned to other schools who sure. are now not, so. Sure, and um, Fairfield was paying that tuition, mm -hmm. and they're not anymore um, as tuition. It helps the district because it increases our students, and the more students we have, the lower our cost per student is, um, and the lower our cost per student is, the lower our taxes are, so that's. And the budget did is reflective of, I think, off the top of my head, about one hundred sixty thousand dollars less in costs in this budget. Yes. Currently, Fairfield has sophomores through seniors that are still grandfathered. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So last at the last board meeting when we talked about we were only sending three people and we were talking about just or sending three people out. You're just talking about the freshman class. No, that's something else. She's talking about high school choice. Right, so I was, last, how many students are actually from the district, including the grandfather kids are going elsewhere? So how many kids are from Fairfield are going to, like, Amesburg? Do we have any idea? I don't have the number sure. on my head, but mm -hmm. I, I could probably say it's about 20, 25 kids. kids. Okay. A number at the last meeting, we're talking about Act 29. Right. It's a different form of school choice. 129 doesn't cost us any money. Right, no. Like yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you were talking about kids from St. Albans City and St. Albans Town mm -hmm. that decide to go elsewhere. And Fairfield. Yeah. And Fairfield. Fairfield. Fairfield now. Right, yeah. But you weren't talking about the kids that are already going elsewhere. No, we're not, we weren't talking about the tuitioning students. We were talking about this. That's right. The and that one small school choice. Yeah. And that number will get a little better. The tuitioning ones. The yeah. tuitioning number, a little bit better yeah, every each year, year until each the grandfather's students. Is there any thought of, it has nothing to do with this budget, but I guess just <laughs> for the future, is there any thought for like some yippee ki -yay, we now aren't paying tuition and we're going to see something, like I think that should be out there. That's just my thing. Like, Fairfield's, we're all merged. Here it is. We're saving on tuition, and here's a big benefit for that. And I just think that that should be like publicized. We got a big budget. I get that, but I, I think that that needs to be. Like, I agree. I agree. I guess I don't understand what you're talking about. If we we should we should celebrate the fact that we're saving money by having less tuition kids. And here's what we you know here's what we're doing instead. And even if it's we are buying more computers because this is better, and yet we saved a lot of money. It still needs to be 
voiced and heard that we're saving tuition by by all three of these schools merging together and eventually we won't have tuition students out in three years we still might have students going but we don't have to that would be their there. choice to try Under to do the, the no. voucher right to the point and it wouldn't be a cost for the budget right for students that want right that's right i guess my i just have one more sure no i'm oh, sorry i'm just curious about um special education and funding and as you were talking about teachers like what are your thoughts about paraprofessional i don't want to open up a huge discussion but like as as we're moving and we know we're looking at um quality of staff mm -hmm. and has that impacted special ed funding at all yes. i guess i just it's hard to tell in this thing but julie well we have in this budget there's a reduction in paraprofessionals through attrition um, we have a number of positions who are unable to fill um, now that we're one large employer and one large district we're able to move people around so um, there shouldn't be a, a, a reduction in force of any individuals it should happen through people who just leave over the summer and we also have some vacancies as i said we have also um, had a number of folks retire so we've had savings in new <coughs> salaries but also have chosen to invest uh, in someone who can train paraprofessionals working with the most uh, challenging students behaviorally so that we can then reduce some of our reliance Con on outside contracts okay. yeah so we have a lot of um, planning to how to use staff yeah more long term mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. I know that doesn't. Hello. Yeah, um, the other thing I think that we need to recognize is I don't think we're even feeling the benefits of the efficiencies of this merge, these contract negotiations that we did, because time is money, and my limited experience since we've been merged is, is that first year there there were so many discussions about that the inequities of the contracts and the differences in the contracts and these different grievances that you have to have over stuff. This is a unified contract for the professional staff and the support staff. You guys don't know how special that really, yes. really is. And if you've been on the school board as long as I have, you can totally appreciate it. And I think we're going to realize some incredible efficiencies from this. We just have, aren't realizing it yet. Time, money, and things. And do you all agree with me? Well, I think, I think the important part is, because as a taxpayer looking at this, all I see is, I don't, I don't see where we create, all I see is it's going up. And when you look at this, you know, the summary of expenditures, everything has gone up. So I think, you know, as a taxpayer, for me, it would be really nice to know, so where did we save money? Because if you look at all these different expenditures, you know, it's 50000 here and 200000 here where they've gone up. So, <coughs> Yes. I hear you. No, Due I diligence in terms of figuring out how do we how we represent where our savings are because they're not necessarily reflected when you look budget, you know, line item by budget line item. You're right. That's why I'm pointing out some of these things that we go along so we can kind of get some raw rahs along the way because we've been living them and we ha we celebrate these little things along the way. But it's really hard to show that all on a list that you know you're trying to present to people on two pages you know the what what two years of work have, has done so it's it's hard you know come to every school board meeting and sit with us and listen to the whole thing well here's here's the thing <laughs> our budget is going up 1.6 million dollars our salaries and benefits are going up 1.45 million dollars so that's like 90 percent of our increases is in budgets and salaries but it sounds like you guys carefully consider as people were leaving. That to me is important. Yeah. We're really so trying. Fairfield and I'm going, yippee, we have less tuition and our taxes are going up. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. hey. But you know, so you really have to hear that, like that you, and, and I, I trust that you guys as school board members were looking at that and as principals, um, special director, 
that you were looking at, okay, we're losing some staff, what do we do here? And, and I appreciate it. I just want to say thank you for all of you for all of your work that you're doing. Thank you for that. Not overly like yippee, but you know, like you said, 90% of it is salaries. What are you going to do? Take away somebody else so the kids can Well, what's less. so frustrating is our budget is going up 3%. Taxes are going up yeah. 12 percent much in the more city than, and in Fairfield yeah. and nine and nine percent in the town. Now it probably won't be that bad because, like I said, the yield is they're going to change the yield and probably get a couple cents. Less. But <laughs> <laughs> but the bottom line is taxes are going up and there's nothing that this board can really do about. It. I mean, it's just our budget, so. um, and nobody's more frustrated than we are. You know, at the beginning of the year, we had the state legislator come in and tell us. Nine cents right off the bat. So, um, hopefully things will be better, but that's where we stand now. Any questions? Going once, <laughs> twice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.